Hello kaikki! Niin, me katsotaan vähän. Jos on kunnossa. What do you want to wish, my little child? My little child is little. So when I was younger, all my cousins would come over to my house and hang out with my sister and I. The parents would go to work and the kids would look after each other. Hashtag immigrant hustle. Not one day shortly after mm. our parents left, we were in the middle of playing video games when the house yeah. phone rang. Yeah, a house phone. It's like a cell phone, but attached to your house. Oh, God, I'm showing my age. So, my older cousin answered it. Hello? Hello? No answer. Weird, but whatever. So, we continued playing video games. Shut so, up! I can't do your ticket This time, another cousin answered. Same thing. No gone. answer. Now, at this point, we could have made up rational conclusions, such as, you know, maybe it's the wrong number, or a bad connection, a telemarketer, whatever. But that's not what kids do. Instead, we concluded that someone was definitely trying to murder us, and we should come up with a master plan to stop it. Come to think of it, this might have been around the holidays, and we may or may not have been watching Home Alone, but I swear to God, that doesn't have anything to do with it. So it began. We decided we were going to document whenever we would receive calls. I mean, all the details, the date, the time, everything. Now, we noticed a pattern in the calls that happened every single day. And by pattern, I mean we made this conclusion on day two. What? Okay, listen, patterns can be two days. But either way, this became our new obsession. On day three, we received more calls than usual. It was definitely a sign. So we began to brainstorm. Is it a robber? A spirit? A demon? The possibilities were endless. Something just didn't feel right. Our brainstorm was interrupted by one of my cousins when they said, Hey, did you hear that? Now, I definitely did not, but nonetheless I replied, Yes! Oh my god! What was that? I don't want to be the first to die by denying the presence of the demon. I mean, maybe something was in our house. It was time to take action. We gathered all of the utensils in the drawers and headed straight to the master bedroom. The plan was simple. Lock ourselves in the room as a group and create a safe haven. Duh. I don't know why people in horror movies always split up. Is this your first day? But before locking ourselves in the room, we strategically placed three toys on the floor, spaced out perfectly. Hours went by with us locked in that room, pacing, stressing, sweating, and terrified of the phone ringing. But eventually our hunger got the best of us and we were in desperate need of Oreos. So we decided to slowly and carefully make our way to the kitchen. After what seems like a lifetime, we finally made it to the kitchen and let out a huge sigh of relief. <laughs> we're fine. We're just acting ridiculous. Until one of my cousins says, one of the pigs fell. We freeze. Together, we slowly look over at where we placed the line of piggies and notice that one had taken a tumble. How? Who could have possibly knocked it over? Or rather, what? We freak out. Now at this point, it's survival mode. It's either us or the demon, and we decide we need to stand our ground. We open every door within the house, each holding the biggest utensil we could find, and screaming. Door, open, jab, fork, scream, repeat. Door, open, jab, fork, ah! repeat. But we found nothing. A couple hours later, our parents came home and everyone left. Since that day, we never received a call. We never felt anything suspicious. I mean, obviously, which demon wants to mess with a bunch of kids holding some forks? Seuraava. It was a regular day, but I wasn't feeling so well. So that morning, my mom drove me to school, and we were in the parking lot in the car. I was like, Mom, I feel like I'm going to vomit today. Like, what's going to happen if I do? I don't want anyone to make fun of me. I don't want them to say anything bad about me. I, like, I don't. And I was just like, Mom, you can't let me vomit at school. Please take me home. And my mom replied very coolly and calmly, you're not going to vomit. Stop overreacting. So, 
I went to school and it was time for class and I sat beside the meanest girl in her grade. She was very mean and manipulative and she always dressed in pink, wearing a pink headband. She just really aggravated me and I so happened to sit beside her. I started to feel a bit weird. My stomach started to crumble. It felt like I was having an earthquake in my stomach. I felt something going up my throat. In my mind, I was screaming, no, no, this can't be happening. No, this is not happening to me. I was like, okay, I need to vomit. I need to go to the bathroom, react fast, and it will all be okay. So I got up, and the mean girl... I was moving her desk very gently. I was pushing it away so I could pass to go to the bathroom. And she wasn't letting me pass through, being the mean witch she was. And I kept on pushing her chair forward so I could pass, but she wouldn't let me. So I stood there and I finally just pushed her. And she hit into the desk so hard, literally so hard. Hard, I could see her eyes turning red and it looked like she poked out a few devil hearts. And I turned around and the was coming up. And get up going, Literally gagging and uh -oh. I just vomit. And everyone turned around and started to point fingers and laugh at her. And I felt really bad because this is my fault. And ever since then she hated me. But it's life. So that's my story. That is a really, really, a really disgusting. I don't know. In the sixth grade, I got my first real pet. He was just a tiny, fragile puppy, and his name was Bodhi. Bodhi went everywhere with me. We'd go outside, chase tennis balls, go for walks, and play with his favorite thing in the world, puff balls. One time, he got a whole basket full of them for Easter. In the summers, Bodhi and I would go swimming and make videos about him saving floating pink princess fairies from alligators. Of course, after all of our swimming, we would always share a popsicle together. In the fall, he would protect us from any trick-or-treaters by viciously barking at them until they ran away. In the winter, we would make igloo homes together. He also loved catching snowballs in the air. He always got covered in snow afterwards, so we would run inside and sit by the fire until we melted back to normal. Bodhi was always there for me, no matter what. When I'd get sick and be in bed all day, he'd always come and check on me. As soon as I'd get home from school, he'd jump on me and lick my face until I couldn't breathe. Sometimes we get weird looks when I order two vanilla milkshakes at Sonic, and the car hop watches me give the other one to Bodhi. I mean, it's his favorite. I talk to Bodhi like any other human. He's a very smart dog and knows when to run to the car when I say, let's go for a ride, and where to hide when I yell, do you want a bath? Today, Bodhi is accompanied by two other cats, Mitchie and Ollie. Every day, Bodhi tells me that they torture him while I'm at school, but I think he's just being overdramatic. He only attaches to certain people and absolutely hates other dogs. Seriously, like, he may think he's tough, but one day he'll realize he's the size of a skateboard. I'm going away to college in a couple of months, and I'm terrified to leave Bodhi. We go everywhere together because we only have a few months left together. We go to Starbucks, get gas at the gas station, even pick up my little sister from school together. He likes smiling at all the little kids. I'm even thinking about taking him to prom with me. I mean, he'd look great in a pink bow tie. When I leave for college, I'm not sure what's going to happen to Bodhi. That scares me the most. One time, we were laying in bed, and I thought to myself, What if he gets depressed? What if he doesn't recognize me when I visit? Or what if he runs away and tries to look for me? The anxiety had taken over, and I completely freaked myself out. I looked down at Bodhi and tried to tell myself that everything will be okay. He even gave me a reassuring nod before laying his head down to fall asleep. I smiled and closed my eyes, feeling confident that Bodhi was going to be just fine. And no matter what happens, we will always be connected, somehow, some way. Aww. First things I saw when I was born was my dog Leo. 
he was a golden retriever and he had like long hair and all saggy. He was really adorable. And from like the first moment mm -hmm. I really ever saw him in my life, I was just connected to him. We did everything together. Mm -hmm. We played catch, we rolled in mud, we'd make forts and sit in them all day and watch movies together, and we'd go camping with my dad. He was always with me and followed me everywhere I went. When Leo got older, he started getting sick and tired, and we kind of played the way he That made me really upset, but I still loved What's him. What's wrong like with you, my babe? One day, I'm nothing. my mom let me stay my home honey. from school, and my I just honey. decided that, you know, I'd be with him. We played ball, we played I'm King Leo, we did all the things it's that it's I used to do with him. And I just had a smile on my face when I was going to bed. And I was like really happy and thinking of like tomorrow to play with him. Hmm. In the middle of the night, um, my mom woke me up. She had like tears and she told me that Leo was dying in the vet. And um, I was like panicking, I was running around the room in circles. I asked if I could go say like goodbye to him, basically. But he was really far away, and my dad brought him. So when my dad finally got back, he broke the news. He, um, Leo was dead, and I was just really, really upset. I stopped crying for like two minutes, and then I hysterically start crying again. And I finally started falling asleep. I kept glancing at the spot he usually um, slept at, and um, he just wasn't there. The next day, I just kept crying. I didn't go to school. I was so upset. And when we were staring at the grave, I was just crying because, like, I'd never see him again. And it was just really hard because, like, the fact kept running through my head. Like, he's not here anymore. I still miss him and walk in, sometimes forgetting that he's not alive anymore and expecting to see him. But I'm fine now. He's basically still here in my heart. Uh, this is my new dog, Van here. He just walked up. Say hi. He's, he's like looking his lips. Hey, buddy. Hmm. Oh my god, we totally jumped off the cliff and had to zoom all the way to shore because the dog chased us all the way to the end. I had a friend and he was one of my best friends in the world and we were both going to go to sleepaway camp together and I was worried to go to sleepaway camp because I had never been before. It made me feel better that I was going with him. The first day I was there, he got there a little bit late and I was just waiting for him because I didn't really know anybody. When he got there, I was really excited. So I went over to him and I said, hi, and he said, oh, hey in a really tired-like voice, so I thought maybe he's just tired. When we went into the rec room and went over to the ping-pong tables, he seemed so much more animated when he was talking to somebody who wasn't me. It went from, oh, hey, to, oh, hey! I kind of felt left out. Later, we were all sitting in a circle choosing our activities. Before the camp, we had both decided that we were going to do BB gun shooting. When they got to me, I said, BB gun shooting. And they got to him, and he said, sailing. And I was like, wait, what? I feel like he did that because he didn't want to hang out with me, and that made me kind of sad. The next day, he was eating breakfast with guys at a full table, and I went over to sit down, and I was like, is this seat taken? And literally, literally, he, did, he didn't even answer me. Literally, he just kept talking and eating cereal. And that night, when we did the campfire roasting, I sat next to him, and he made two s'mores and i didn't have a stick i thought that he was gonna give that one to me because i thought that he was trying to just kind of be nice to me a little bit he was like so do you want this i said yeah and he was like i'm not talking to you i'm talking to and then i turned around and there was one of his new friends but right behind me and i just just went back to the cabin missed out on the s'mores when he came back to the bunk after the campfire i went over to him and said hey do you want to play basketball when we wake up in the morning he said, you know what, I don't want to hang out, okay, just, just please stop it, you're being really annoying. I was just so shocked, and I just wanted to get so raged up, and just get so mad, and just like, give him a piece of my mind, but I didn't, I tried to get to sleep, and then I just started to cry, and I really, just, really cried a lot, and I, I just couldn't stop, it just kept coming, and I was really homesick, and I just wanted to go home now. 
the rest of the days rolled by just like that. He would really ignore me. And when my parents came to pick me up, I acted like nothing had happened, but something really did happen. I lost a friend at that camp. Hmm. It was really in my first year.